Hello and welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling in Nassau County, in, in, Long, in New York. Sorry, losing my marbles, I think. And I'm drinking coffee one second to get awake. So how long does, uh, um, where I teach you how to start flipping and wholesaling properties in New York or if you're already doing how to grow your business? So the question I got is how long does a wholesale deal take? And unfortunately, the question, the answer really is it depends, right? So if you are, first of all, if you're out of New York, um, things are much quicker, right? A quick wholesale deal in most parts of the country is two weeks. In New York, things take much longer, but it really also depends on the situation because, you know, I know people that really focus their marketing on vacant properties. If the property is vacant, the process can be much quicker. I buy a lot of owner-occupied properties and very often, Seller's not ready to leave. Sorry, seller's not ready to go anywhere. So if the seller's not ready to go, it, we're going to wait as long as it takes, right? I I, I told people we got, I got in, it wasn't a wholesale deal. It was a wholesale deal that I got in. I was in contract for 19 months because the lady got terminal cancer and I waited for her to pass away and bought it from her, from her children. But very often there are issues, right? Even if it's a vacant deal, sometimes they want to take things out of there and they need time. Sometimes... There are other issues. There's a tenant that's leaving. There's all kinds of things. So it takes a long time. Now, how, what's a quick wholesale deal for me? That's a good question. And your head might explode if you're from other state, but a quick wholesale deal for me is about two months. Now, what the hell takes so long, right? So the truth is that's from when the seller says yes. Seller says yes, it's still going to take a couple of weeks just to get into contract because the seller's attorney prepares the contract, sends it to my attorney, we agree on the terms, then we're in a contract. Then I got to show it to people who are going to buy it, uh, potentially, and I got to negotiate with them, and I'm usually ordering title as soon as we get at the contract, but I then got to get everything on title. Title takes a long time in a lot of municipalities, so title contains in title uh, municipal searches, you know, in, in certain places like town North Hempstead, those housing and building searches take a very long time. Some uh, of the villages are quicker. Some of the towns are, they take three or four weeks. It could take three or four weeks just to get title. So then hopefully I found a buyer. Buyer's ready to use my title, which doesn't happen every time. Sometimes they insist on using their own title, which I hate. And I, I, I would, I would use, in general, I will, I will sell it. I will sell a wholesale property to a buyer for a little bit less if they're using my title. Now, why do I care if a wholesale buyer is using my title? A few issues. Number one, I have a relationship with my title company. If there's something that's sort of gray, they'll usually let me close, hold somebody in escrow, figure it out later, that kind of thing. That's number one. The main reason though, is if you have a cash buyer who says they're gonna order their own title, that is basically an excuse to drag this thing out for a long time. I'm waiting for title, I'm waiting for searches. So if I know that I have title and I have all the searches in, that excuse goes away. So me having the control over that excuse is is important to me, right? Also using my telecom is important to me too, but in general, um, you just don't want a, a buyer. Uh, now remember, on a wholesale deal, you're in the middle. You're representing things to a seller, and then if the buyer doesn't come through, you're stuck in the middle and maybe I uh, have to apologize. Just had that recently. I had a deal get pushed off like twice uh, for a week. Eventually we closed, but buyer was jerking me around. It happens sometimes. It's also sometimes a scheduling issue. So buyer's attorney's away on vacation. My attorney might be away. There's all kinds of things that can happen. So the more you're getting three people involved, it's not uncommon at a wholesale closing to have four attorneys there, right? Seller's attorney, my attorney, buyer's attorney, and if the buyer's getting a hard money loan, then there's a lender's attorney. So everybody's got to be on the same page, show up at this, show up around the same time. It's not so simple to coordinate four schedules. So a quick wholesale deal for me is really like two months. I think I've closed a couple in uh, two months. Most of the time, it takes even longer. That is the truth. Um, if I need to close and then, you know the money's ready, then I can close much quicker. I can close in two weeks. But... Um, that's how long the deal takes. There's all kinds of things that can happen also. Title shows up and there's a problem. Sometimes you got to get a document. You got to get a death certificate. That's hard to get. You have to get some kind of clearance from an old deed. Sometimes those things can take weeks. Weeks, right? Um, and remember, in New York, a title company is not 
managing the transaction. They're not dispersing the funds. The attorneys are dispersing the funds. Title company is there basically to do two things in New York. First thing, make sure all the liens are paid off, right? Which is why it's almost impossible to do subject to in New York. And the second thing is make sure all the taxes are paid off, which is usually an easier thing to do. But sometimes liens show up that nobody knows about. They might've been paid off a million years ago and we need to get proof. An old mortgage will show up from a previous owner. And then we have to decide what we're doing with that. These things happen. And when they happen, it delays the whole closing. It's nice to think that we can get the closing done without it, get past it. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, right? If it's over, you know, 30 years ago, very often you close that affidavit. But what if it's 12 years ago? <coughs> what if the seller refinanced the property, never got a satisfaction mortgage? This happens all the time. So the company wants proof that it was paid off. Sometimes that can take time. Done with that, especially if the lender went out of business, which happens a lot today, right? The guy took a loan, some shitty lender refinanced. The original lender went out of business. You got to get a satisfaction of mortgage from a lender that doesn't exist. It could take time. So there's seller issues, there's property issues. Sometimes, right? Um, some new lien, some new violation will show up that'll screw everything up, and you got to decide what you're going to do with it. Will you close with? You know, do you want an adjustment? These things happen all the time. So. It's very hard to know, especially in New York, right? The mentality is different in New York than the other four. I keep going, trying to go this way. I'm going in the other 49 states. In the other 49 states, people really think, and they can close a deal in a week, right? So if they're in a financial pinch, some kind of problem, sorry, they look to uh, an investor like us to get out. In New York, people don't look at their real estate as liquid as that, right? They sort of think, hey, I'm going to get at this, but it's going to take me a while. And it does take a while. And because that's the thought process, everything takes a while. So um, I've closed deals in under two months, but it's rare. And a wholesale deal, really, you are on some level beholden to the cash buyer. So you need to, the ways to protect yourself from the cash buyer so that they can't jerk you around to the point where you really feel like a schmuck when you're telling something to the seller and the buyer is jerking you around. You want to give an assignment to them that's time of the essence, which says, hey, you've got to close this date. If we're ready to close, you got to close this date, or I'm keeping your deposit. And get a significant deposit. So those are the ways you can and, and force them to use your title, right? Because t the main excuses that people use, right, are my attorney's not ready and my title's not in. Um, and sometimes it's true, and sometimes it's not. If they, you force them to use your title, that you take away a big portion of their excuses. So yeah, maybe their attorney. Sometimes I've wholesale properties to buyers with horrible attorneys. Horrible. I just had someone terrible, the worst attorney I ever dealt with. Just a schmuck wouldn't sign documents. Just killed the whole deal. It happens once in a while, but I found somebody else to buy it. So what's important is that you try and box the the buyer in as best you can to not be able to move away and, and and jerk you around because you are representing things to the seller all the time and if the buyer doesn't come through you're stuck in the middle and you feel like a schmuck it just, it just happened to me and it happens it's it's just it's the way things work it's a terrible feeling told the guy you're going to close can't close you got to call him back and say and, and and sometimes make up an excuse why so it's but it's the way the business works and it's worth it it's definitely worth it so i hope this was helpful Time frame is an interesting thing. Again, it's different in every situation. If you have a buyer living there and he doesn't leave, you're not, probably not going to close. Right? If there's a tenant who said he's going to leave but doesn't leave, probably not going to close. Buyer says that he's coming this weekend with his siblings to go get all the stuff, get, comes and gets and doesn't make a dent, or his sibling can't show up, he says, I don't want to close. So you need to be flexible on situations like that because you know it's a seller-driven transaction. You're trying to the whole, only reason the seller is selling it to you at a, at a discount is because you're trying to make it more convenient for them. And because of that, you're going to close whenever they want. Um, pushing them hard to close sooner um, sometimes is good for them and sometimes it's not good for them. And you want to do whatever is good for them. So I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are interested in uh, finding out more about one-on-one -on -one coaching I offer, go to coaching dot. <coughs> how to flip new york.com if you are interested oh, what the hell there's nothing else to be interested in i have a course but whatever um so if you uh if you're watching on youtube please subscribe watch on any channel please click the thumbs up the likes really help me and please keep the comments coming i post five times a week um 
I don't always know what to say, so I'm happy to hear your comments. They could be about anything. It doesn't have to be about the video you're watching. If it's a simple answer, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something I've covered before, I'll send you links to videos. If it's something new or something I haven't covered in a while, I'll do it. <coughs> Sorry, a new video on it. Thank you very, very much for watching.